It's a cynical observation, but perhaps the greatest feature of democracy is not so much that it reflects the will of the people, but that voters have the opportunity once every three years to get down to the polling booth and turf out their government. This is the likely outcome when voters in New South Wales get down to the booths this Saturday. Voting's already opened. Will it be Dom, the 21st birthday party Nazi, or Chris Pokey's Mins, as he's nicknamed? The media's fond of beating up a tight race, down to the wire, tough to call, and these kind of things. But the reality is that the books have the coalition paying $6 and Labor just $1.13. It's emphatic. So what's at stake here? The recent staggering publication by Friendly Geordies of the secret John Barillaro tapes has been telling. Although the corporate media has blithely ignored these secret recordings, they show in stark relief just how cavalier this government is about spending public money, about its pork barreling and corruption. Barillaro and his mates are guffawing, chortling about spraying millions in public money on cynical projects to win votes. It's a joke. They think it's a joke. Political corruption and the gross failure of privatisation, the destruction of native forests, the kowtowing to fossil fuel interests, the housing crisis, rising inequality means it's indeed time to turf this lot out. But what are the alternative? Labor. For viewers in other states, it's worth pointing out that the policies of the two major parties are pretty similar in New South Wales and most of the big issues. And another thought that unlike the coalition at the federal level, which is, um, you know, a clown show, policyless, or in Victoria or WA likewise, the coalition in New South Wales is a more competent mob, just as venal perhaps on the pork barrelling, but more competent in the way perhaps of South Australia or Tasmania. So this week, in a series by Callum Foot, our reporter, on what the parties are offering, we look at the differences. We follow the money, not the hype. So Callum covers climate and emissions, education, forests, labour, economic management, health, and of course, the scourge of pokies. Now, both parties are pro gas fracking. Neither has decried Santos's creepy efforts to frack the Pilliga forest and the rich food bowl, which is indeed the Liverpool Plains sitting above the Great Artesian Basin. This is a disaster in the making, and almost all the farmers are up in arms about it. It has no community backing, no ESG, no licence to operate, but both parties are backing it. Such is the nature of being bought off by political donations. On forests, there's been a 1,300% deforestation under coalition. So that's 12 years, 1,300% deforestation, and not much fuss made either by Labor. But Labor has, to give it credit, committed to a review. It's better than nothing, a good old review. And if the koalas were to vote, they would vote Labor on account of the proposal for a great koala national park. Pokies. Now, this is a New South Wales tragedy. This state is the biggest gambling province in the world. And the seeds, of course, were sown under Labor's previous 16 years in office uh, before the coalition got up 12 years ago. Dominic Perrottet is espousing the cashless gaming card. It's a significant reform. He has actually bucked the coalition trend nationally and stood up and stood for something. Chris Minns, on the other hand, is being very weak on this. He's promising a limited trial of the card, of cashless gaming cards. Meanwhile, people are dying and destitute as a result of the proliferation of pokies. 100 billion through the machines in the state, 10 billion in player losses. Now, education, Outcomes have gone backwards for school children in the state. The policies of the two major parties differ in presentation. Uh, Perite's Children's Future Fund subsidy is a vote buyer. Chris 
Mins, for his part, is espousing no mobile phones in class, better pay for teachers, which will help. But overall, there are only modest differences, the spending, the allocation to education, which is so critical for Australian society, is the same. No big ideas there either. Economic management, no privatisation. That's the big difference. Chris Mins has said we're going to shut the gate on privatisation. No more PPPs. Indeed, the horses slightly bolted here with $100 billion almost in assets flogged off under the coalition reign. Anything which is not bolted down, this mob will sell. New South Wales motorists suffer the highest tolls in the country, the most tolling. All that does is deliver massive profits to the monopolist, which is Transurban, which pays zero corporate income tax. This is a neoliberal failure of both sides of government, Now, the Northern Beaches Hospital, of course, is even owned by a Cayman Islands entity. So the ravages of privatisation have already occurred. Stopping any more privatisations is a good thing, and Chris Menz has made the promise to do that, although very, very late in the day. If you're a worker, you're better off under labour, obviously, because you're going to have more power to the unions and to workers to collectively negotiate. Investment bankers, of course, will no doubt do better under Dominic Perrottet, given the privatisation bent. Now, there's one important thing in this election uh, which differs from state to state and federally, and that is preferential voting. This is important, although it's a little recognised point. The best outcome might be for independents to prosper at this election because the major parties really do not stand for enough, particularly on fossil fuels, on any major reforms, in fact. So voters should be aware, although it hasn't been telegraphed by the major parties, certainly, they have the option of preferencing anybody they choose. Thanks for your support at Michael West Media and at The West Report here. We rely on community donations to keep going and to keep the spotlight on powerful institutions of government and corporations. So thank you very much to support us.